Francesca, um, let me just introduce you for those who don't know you. Um, Francesca Bria um, is born in Italy. She's an, an economist and one of the leading experts for digitalization in Europe. Till last year, she was a CTO, the chief technology officer in Barcelona, and worked on the huge project to turn Barcelona into a smart city. Um, she is the president of the Italian Innovation Fund, and the news is that she's now the senior advisor for the new um, Hamburg think tank, the new institute. Francesca, um, what are your plans for Hamburg? What will you do there? How will you turn Hamburg in an even smarter city? Yeah, I think the ambition is to turn um, cities, not only in smarter cities, which means to have better technological infrastructure, to use data and technology to transform the city, but really in more democratic and inclusive cities. So to give more power to citizens and to make sure that technology is governed as a common good, as a public infrastructure in order to really serve people. So in order to improve the fundamental services that matter to people, which is uh, uh, fight climate change, uh, improve their public life, healthcare, education, and also I think to regain uh, trust towards democracy. So to switch towards a more participatory democracy that really devolve more power to the citizens. So we want to um, basically be, sit, become, I mean, make cities uh, people first and not technology first, which also means um, a little bit turn upside down the logic of the smart city that starts really from technology and maybe is governed only uh, by few uh, big tech players but become a democratic, sustainable uh, green city. And I think that Hamburg is very ambitious and they are talking about becoming a future cities that is going to be digital, green, uh, democratic and make participatory democracy and democratic control of data the core of uh, the policy program. So basically I'm gonna um, work with the city of Hamburg and with the new institute uh, to make Hamburg the really uh, a laboratory for democratic innovation and sustainability. Okay, in Barcelona, one of the first things you invented was a platform where citizens um, could share their ideas, where they um, could be part of the process of decision making. Do you think that Hamburg needs such a platform too? Well, in Barcelona, the core of our experiment was to reshape the relationship between citizens and government, citizens and public institution. And um, so make sure that uh, citizens could use the, their collective intelligence and their collective action to really shape the policies of the cities. And Barcelona uh, involved 400,000 citizens into shaping the policy program of the city and 70% of the action plan of the city of Barcelona came directly from citizens. So this is a huge change from a kind of top-down, more technocratic management of the city into a bottom-up participatory process where then the policies that are implemented are the ones that really are transforming the, the, the life of the citizens for the better. And as we know, especially now in the pandemic, uh, citizens are really worried about their public health care, uh, education, essential services, also fight climate change, have sustainable mobility, so implement this green sustainable transition. And I think you can only do it engaging fully citizens in their participation in policy making. So the platform doesn't mean that this is a Facebook democracy. So digital democracy doesn't mean that we are saying you click here and you save everything, you change the world. It's a much more complex process. It's a hybrid between participation in neighborhood, uh, people getting more active and shaping their life, uh, uh, collaborating with the city council, uh, but at the same time using technology which is governed in a democratic way 
that preserve the privacy of citizens, uh, infrastructures that are controlled by citizens themselves, so that data is not manipulated, so that uh, you know we don't fear uh, that our data is sold or used for uh, manipulation and control or surveillance, but actually these democratic platforms can really help uh, to improve exactly this trust between the citizens and their public institutions. So I think that implementing something like the city in Barcelona, but in particular this large scale democratic participation process can be very good for Hamburg as well. And I think the added value of cities is that cities act in a network. But and people, uh, so people... Hamburg can, part can collaborate with other cities across Europe and across the world. But do people need to share more data for, li for living in a smart city? Because people are, many people are, um, they don't want to share that much data. Yes, exactly. So I think I am a real believer in uh, what I call digital and data democracy, but also digital sovereignty, which means that people should get back the democratic control over technology and data. And getting into your question, this also means like in Barcelona, we implemented a project that's called Decode, and we put in place a decentralized privacy enhancing platform that give back the control of data to citizens. So they can decide what data they wanna keep private, so they can use cryptography and privacy enhancing technology to protect the data, but they can also choose what data they wanna share with whom and on what term. And this is implementing a kind of radical decentralization of data that now it's in the hands of very few big tech giants. And so if we share data preserving security, ethics, and privacy, we can also create public value. So we can improve public services and create better, uh, better cities. So okay. we can have a trade-off. We can have privacy, ethics, and security, and more uh, digital sovereignty, but we can also use data to share it and to democratize it so that we can uh, improve our city. Francesca, that sounds so good, but there are um, some companies um, who contain data and to who collect data and to um, and it's their business model to have the data and don't share it with us. How can we get the data back from them, from those Googles and Facebooks? Yeah, exactly. I think our big mission is to shift from a system of surveillance capitalism, as you said, where a few companies are owning and controlling all the data, and then they're violating our privacy and our fundamental rights and also our liberties, to a model where these companies are going to be mandated to share public interest data, but we can use this data for the common good, but in but in principle, preserving, uh, you know, the data protection, the privacy and the security of the data. And we can do this with the technologies that we have now, such as decentralized um, uh, distributed ledger technology or privacy enhancing technology. I think we need to uh, get to a point where we change the culture that we have in society and we put forward, uh, you know, this uh, public interest and the common good when we talk about technology, because it's, it's about redistributing power and also redistributing economic wealth and then having collective rights over technology. So I think this is a fundamental battle of our political life in the future. And do you think that more participation of people always leads to better decisions? And, and, and politics. Are you optimistic? I think, I think, well, I think democracy is a contested issue. So democracy is not something, you know, without conflict. Is Democracy is a, is a process where there is conflict, there is diversity, um, where you need to be inclusive, you need to accept the interests of different uh, parts of society, different ethnic uh, minorities, gender, socioeconomic background, different interests. And then you, as a politician, you have to do a forward looking radical choices sometimes like the one we are facing now where we want to become climate neutral uh, by 2035 or 2050 we need to change our production model we need to uh, move to a digital um, uh, digitalization that is sustainable we want to devolve more power to people i mean these are choices that require 
co courage in politics. And I think by engaging citizens and making them more conscious and more <laughs> active in the participation process, of course, we can get to better decisions, but also to decisions that really matter to people. And technology play a big part. So we, we are gonna have to be able to put technology really at the service of these fundamental needs of people. So we can only do it through participation. And in particular, as Europe, this is our added value. We do not, we do not want to move to a system of surveillance capitalism where big tech company have too much power, but we also don't want to go into the Chinese way, such a big state okay. where you know you the government has a lot of power. We want to move to a big democracy. So more power to the citizens, decentralized decision making. I think we can do it. So I, I'm optimistic about that. That's good. Francesca, it's a pity our time is up. Just one question, very short question. Back to your new job at the new institute, what is the main difference between Hamburg and Barcelona? <laughs> well, uh, very different cities, but uh, I think uh, maybe a lot of commonalities more than differences because they're very dynamic cities. They are cities that are at the frontier of this new wave, both on the digital side, but also on the sustainability and green side. And also, I think what brings Barcelona and Hamburg together is this passion for people first, to put really the citizens at the very center of the political life. So um, lots of differences, of course, local context, <laughs> uh, it has to be diverse, but I think um, I see also a lot of uh, common points. Francesca, I am so sure Hamburg will love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.